Isabel. Mine is going to be brief, though, so. Um, well, uh, this is my first presentation on digital humanities. I, I'm quite new in the field. Um, I come from gender studies and uh, literary and cultural criticism, old school. So, um, let me see. So, um, this talk is just, um, you know, uh, I would like to share some ideas on a potential project. It's a seed of a seed of an idea of a potential project, so it's not technical at all. Uh, it's not uh, microstructural, as all the other talks have been. It is uh, macro-structural, I mean, more related to the humanistic cultural creation of spaces online. Um, so um, uh, the first, uh, well, the idea I would like to share to you is the, the usefulness and the need, I think, of generating a, a women's poetry and poetics European network. And the first step will be to raise attention here right now in the, in the room on the issue of the politics of digital humanities and, and the issue of gender, feminism, and the place of women in digital humanities, which according to uh, feminist digital humanist uh, Jacqueline Vernimont, who has recently posted this uh, denounced somehow, is still exclusionary or um, um, uh, invisible invisible place. Anyways, there are very well established feminist collectives online, Main, most of them coming from uh, the United States, U US based, such as Fembot Collective, uh, or Feminist Online Spaces, which is quite interesting. Uh, another issue related to gender is, of course, um, bridging the gender techno-digital divide, which other feminist platforms are taking care of, such as Rails Girls, who edu uh, which uh, educate somehow women on technological um, uh, procedures to make projects viable and, and possible. <coughs> My research, my field of expertise is women's literature and feminist literary criticism. So my attention is focused on digital projects in these fields, and we find many of them. The Pioneer and Women Writers Project uh, is uh, US-based, of course, and is based on early modern women's uh, literature. The Orlando Project, Perdida, Perdida Archive on 1500 and 1700 women's poetry, women's uh, literature, sorry. Victorian Women Writers Project, and BSS in uh, Spain. Um, they are encoding text and um, um, they are, uh, you know, archival in nature, you know, it's a database for these literatures. My question is, where are the digital projects on uh, late 20th century and early 21st century women's literature, women's culture, women's poetry and poetics? Why poetry and poetics? Uh, as a conclusion of my recent research, it seems that the early 21st century uh, is one of the periods when more poetry events are taking place, where more poetry is being written uh, in text and digitally uh, by women, and when less critical and digital attention is being uh, paid to this phenomenon. So, as I think digital humanities is the place for the evolution for any kind of uh, critical criticism and, and cultural criticism, and of course feminist literary criticism, I would suggest the idea and ask for collaboration and, and interest around on creating a digital platform on contemporary women's poetry uh, as a European network. Um, the creation of digital, this is based on the creation, on my own uh, belief that the creation of digital cultural spaces by women on women's cultural productions are still needed to make women visible. And in this, you know, related to this issue, I think 
uh, Lucia Bonatti's uh, project is, is making some harm women uh, visible too online, which is good. And uh, this culture, this creation of uh, this uh, digital cultural space um, <coughs> will be feminist, of course, in, in, um, in pedago pedagogy and philosophically uh, oriented. Archival, since it will be based on uh, what has been done and written and collective, because it will gather, it will be a, a digital space to collect events and writing from different places in Europe, but also ger generative and emotion, because it will create evolution in theoretical debate on poetics right now. Um, the content, of course, it will be heterogeneous, not only textual poetry, digital poetry, slam poetry, performance, special poetics, and of course, the issue of gender and creativity. So that's, that's my talk. It's, it's not a, a project that is already on. It's a project that could be possible in the future with, of course, um, with the web of connections and collaborations in this. Okay. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Questions? Yeah. <coughs> You're second, Lee. I'm second. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, I know. Uh, thank you. That was um, extremely interesting. And I, it got me wondering. Um, one of the other points that have been pointed about uh, about digital humanities is um, in particular due to the lack of open access uh, for 20th century materials and 21st century materials has led with the digital humanities to particularly focus on the 19th century texts and earlier, um, predominantly simply because those materials are, um, are available. And it hadn't occurred to me um, before the degree to which that does lead to a, a, an overrepresentation um, of male authors, simply because that's you know, historically that there's been that um, that imbalance. And I wonder if you have any thoughts about whether th 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 those issues of open access then really are genuinely feminist um, issues, principally because it's, it's leading to invisibility of these really important developments in the 20th and 21st century. Mm, no, I haven't thought on this issue. Um, I'm a beginner in digital humanities, but uh, talking on copyrights um, uh, issues, well, the nature of the, of the platform would be collective and, and, and so I guess um, authors that are writing online or authors that are performing on any European space could access the platform and, and you know, through organizational an organizational basis present their information there just voluntarily I guess I don't know if I answer your question there next question I also wanted to raise the issue of copyright so. yes okay well thank you again for your talk. thanks